From 1973 to 1986, there was one place to get all of the Saturday morning adventure you could possibly want. It was on ABC and it was produced by Hanna-Barbera and it was, oh wow, based on DC's Justice League of America and it had many names over the years but is most simply known as The Super Friends. Aimed at children, I mean, clearly, the title, the first iteration of the cartoon featured Superman, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman. The Flash, Plastic Man, and Green Arrow all made guest appearances during the first season, but not nearly as often as the three sidekicks the show invented, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog. Now, these three were mostly considered to be heroes in training, though they never displayed any superpowers. Wonder Dog could speak, but like, okay, I mean, a lot of dogs can speak, you know? Almost every episode began in the Hall of Justice, where the team would get a call to action from the supercomputer Trouble Alert. They had a government liaison and usually prevailed by getting the bad guys to be more reasonable. The show ran for 16 episodes before it was unceremoniously canceled. But wait, it returned shortly thereafter in 1977 under the new title, The All New Super Friends Hour. In this iteration, Wendy, Marvin, and Wonder Dog were gone. Because even if you're a super friend, some things are unforgivable, Wendy. You know what you did. In their place were the Wonder Twins, Zan and Jaina, and their pet monkey, Gleek. The twins most definitely had powers as Hanna-Barbera wanted to increase the show's action, and having three sidekicks with no powers at all wasn't helping. Plus, again, let's not talk about the real story of what Marvin was into. This new version featured four segments per week, one that contained two heroes, one Wonder Twins story, and a third segment that featured the entire team. A fourth segment featured a primary character with a special guest star who usually ended up being the one to solve the problem. In between the segments, there were shorts of the team giving out safety lessons, crafting tips, first aid advice, riddles, and magic tricks. You know, stuff kids need. Delicious! And dangerous. This is just what I need for today's magic trick. The trick's called the disappearing coin illusion. By 1978, the show had revamped itself yet again and split off into two shows. One of them contained adventures from the established cast, and the second was called Challenge of the Super Friends. This show was where we finally met the Legion of Doom, a collection of 13 recurring villains who lived in the Hall of Doom, which looked like a giant Darth Vader helmet that rose out of a swamp and could fly around. The Legion of Doom consisted of such famous foes as Lex Luthor, Riddler, Toy Man, Brainiac, Bizarro, Captain Cold, Gorilla Grodd, Sinestro, Scarecrow, and more. The heroes got a boost to their ranks as The Flash, Green Lantern, and Hawkman joined the team. Three new Hanna-Barbera creations joined the cast as well, Black Vulcan, Apache, and Samurai. This version, though, also got rid of the Wonder Twins, because it turns out being a teenager in the Hall of Justice is unsteady work. But fear not, if you thought that the show was done revamping, you'd be very wrong, because in 1979 it was changed yet again, adding more words to the title and becoming the world's greatest super friends. And the Wonder Twins were back, and things had returned to stasis until, yes, the show revamped again in 1980, going back to the original, simpler title of Super Friends. The show now focused on the production of seven-minute shorts, mixing them in with other shorts from previous seasons. The Hanna-Barbera character El Dorado was added in 1981, and the show finally ran for 22 episodes that didn't revamp again. Until 1982, when it came back as the best of the Super Friends, with a handful of lost episodes being made in 1983, and then from 1984 to 1986, the show returned as both Super Friends, the legendary Superpowers show, and the Superpowers team, Galactic Guardians. Legendary Superpowers was notable for its introduction of Firestorm, as well as Darkseid and the crew from Apocalypse. And they were so concerned, because he had his hair was like a fire. It was a cool design. But they couldn't do that in animation, because they were afraid some kid would set his hair on fire. And so his head kind of turned into the Statue of Liberty, you know, the torch. That's what it looked like. It was like a solid object. It was like a helmet that he was wearing. <laughs> and he spent, they spent two and a half months doing that, and it cost $10,000 for that one character. And wow. when it came out, I mean, they came to see me, they go, I spent $10,000 on, but there was a guy that kept changing it. That was the head of the studio, guy that, the guy that did all the, the, created all the Scooby characters, the designs, his name is Ivo Takamoto, guy could draw like a god. And he kept, he kept changing it and changing it, changing it, because he didn't care, he didn't know about budget. <laughs> and each episode had a certain budget, and all that got carried over the first episode. The first episode of Super Friends that year cost the model budget turned out to be like, I don't know, like $30,000, $40,000, which was a lot of money 
for drawings that you're supposed to do like in two days. Galactic Guardians moved the Hall of Justice to Metropolis, added Cyborg, and explored stories that involved the Joker, the Penguin, and the death of Batman's parents. Finally, after 109 episodes, 9 seasons, and over 13 years, and a final story that included the death of Superman, the cycle of revamping ended and the show was cancelled on September 30th, 1986. An army of voice actors had been amassed by the time the show ran its course. Ted Knight and Bill Woodson would both voice the show's narrator, who often just said, meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. In the Great Hall of the Justice League. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. At the Hall of Justice. At the Hall of Justice. But actors like Frank Welker and Deep Space Nine's Rene Auberginois voiced various characters, while Adam West and Casey Kasem were both the voices of Batman and Robin. The show's cult legacy remains huge, and all of the lauded animated DC projects that came after it, including Justice League, may not have happened were it not for the pioneering efforts of the Super Friends. The Justice League pilot actually has the Flash make a joke about whether they should be called the Super Friends when the League is formed in the premiere episodes. Like a bunch of Super Friends? The Lego Batman movie included a scene of the entire cast of Super Friends having a party at the Fortress of Solitude. Super Friends! And Supergirl's musical episode featured Kara and Barry singing a duet aptly titled Super Friend. I'm your super friend. Toy manufacturers continue to create retro-styled versions of these characters, and audiences both young and old are now able to discover the campy fun of the show through various streaming services and physical media. In a simpler time, when the DC characters spent more time talking to children about crafts than they did brooding, Super Friends certainly had a heart as big as its ambition. But have we seen the last of it? In this age of rebooting anything and truly everything, we can't say for certain. And who knows, Wonder Dog may possibly rise again. It would be the least crazy resurrection in DC history. Because he didn't, he's not really dead.